Um, and someone's asking, is there a way to restore only one brush? No. Unless, I apologize, there is a way. And in fact, that segues nicely into what I wanted to do next. Let's say I've got this brush, and this is the new type of skin that I wanted. This is my kind of skin brush, or my, but I know in advance that I need to, this is my brush I have to cross hatch, but it creates nice organic detail. I'm going to save this brush, and it's over here saving it. Let me show you guys, wherever the last thing I saved was. I'm going to save this brush in Z Startup. Brush presets, and I'm going to say skin 02, and now it'll be there forever. As long as I'm working on this, it'll, it'll always load with this version of ZBrush. So let's get back to the question. Uh, if you need to restore a brush, you can load it. Let's say I, I've come into this standard brush and I've really screwed this up and I, I don't remember, did I have sample set, where was depth, the curve was off, and I just need it to be back to normal. You go load brush, but this time you got to do something a little different. You got to go into Z data, brush presets. And these are all the brushes that open with ZBrush. So just find standard. OK. It reset it. Daniel, does that answer your question? Great. So you can load brushes. You can save them. You can clone them. You can create insert mesh brushes, all that stuff. You can select an icon for them. These are icons. It's a little sphere and swirly stuff. I'll show you how to do that later. But that's pretty cool. I loved creating those. So we're talking about alphas. We looked a little bit at like just skin alphas and, and something simple. We looked at Damien's standard brush. It's just an alpha. And just to test you guys, what's the difference between the clay brush and clay tubes? It's real easy. I'm feeding it to you. But I want to make sure you know what it is. What's the difference? Clay brush, clay tubes. Just the alpha. Just the alpha. Trust me. That's one of the brushes I put in there, and I actually spent three days, <laughs> seriously, changing things like curve and um, the modifiers and samples. I changed everything I could, and that was the only thing that made a significant difference. How about the rake brush? What's the difference between the curve brush I'm sorry, not the curved brush, but the clay brush and the rake brush. Same thing. Another one. I spent another three days. I wanted to create a digital rake. You know, everybody was talking to me about that. I was like, oh, my God, I can't wait for this. This clay brush came out. I finally understood it. And, I'm, and I was thinking, you've got to be able to use a rake. The only difference after trying everything was that alpha. And that alpha is a modification of alpha 54, which has been in ZBrush for a long time. But it didn't behave quite the way I wanted it. Pretty awesome. Now I, I adjust these things a little bit myself where I, I don't use rake that often. But anyways, it's the only difference. Now, the one thing that's important to understand, sorry, there's two other elements to alphas that are significant. One of them is this mid-value feature, and this is, you can see this in stitches. 
The other one is patterns and scale, for scales. When do patterns break down? When is it no longer enough to be using a brush? For example, can you use a brush to create chain mail armor? Sure. You can create chain mail armor, but it's not that good because a brush has an area of influence and then it's got another area of influence and then you have a problem where they combine. Nowadays ZBrush is really fixed a lot of these problems with the insert mesh brushes. You have six minutes and you can tell my voice is a uh, knows its time is up. <laughs> Okay, so I got to do this quick, and um, I'm not going to be able to do it as in-depth as I want, but it's fine. I'll get you more. Uh, basically, I want to load a brush. I'm going to move this off to the side. And I need to show you one of my custom brushes. Uh, brush presets. Okay, so I've got a bunch of brush presets here. And what I want to load right now is a stitch one. And let's use our guy and his kimono. Turning solo mode off. Let's get rid of the poly paint. Uh, in fact, let's leave the poly paint, but I'm going to color fill object. Looks like he's got a material there. Okay. How many polygons? So you can put stitching in here if you have enough polygons. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract that. Um, hide points. Okay, it's fine. Um, delete hidden. Hopefully it doesn't crash. I'm asking it to do a lot by modifying or deleting the hidden when it has subdivision levels. Okay. There we go. I can divide that two more times and get in here. This brush is doing something that's really important. And this is what I want to talk about right now. The brush pushes in and pushes out. Who knows what feature does that? And while you're answering me, take a look at the alpha. It's got gray, whitish, and darkish. And Michael's answered it. It's right up here, mid-value. Mid-value means that Wherever there's 50% gray, it's going to treat that as zero displacement. <coughs> everything towards black goes down. Everything towards white goes up. Real straightforward. Really simple. And useful when you're creating your own alphas. So this is done inside of uh, Photoshop. And... Um, and the, pat, the process is real simple for doing these. So let me show you what it looks like so that you have a sense when you're doing your own. Okay. 
so I've got just real simple patterns that are being put in here. I think in the, uh, this one's maybe the simplest. Oh, nothing's working. These are all the collapsed models. So anyways, let's get ourselves back to ZBrush since that's not going to give us a lot of information. Uh, you can get a lot out of this, but there is a fundamental limitation, and it's the limitation we're going to talk about with scales. You are literally just pushing geometry, and so it's not easy to describe what is an actual stitch, the roundness of it. That's not easy to describe. This stuff became possible, and mid-value was one of those features that was invented before the insert mesh stuff and the curve stuff. But the idea was, get this stuff down with this, with this alpha, try to get as much as you can, and then we found out, okay, it's breaking, we really need more advanced tools, and then they started working on insert and curve and those amazing uh, new features. So now, let's, last thing we want to take a look at is in brush. We're going to go into scales. Let's go into scale lizard. And I want you to look at these brushes inside scale. Try to understand what they're doing. It's got an alpha. What creates that border around the alpha? It should be radial fade, this RF, tiny little slider. What kind of brush is it? It's elastic. And then this brush is one of those brushes that uses tilt. in a really interesting way. But it can produce pretty interesting results with some sort of connection between the two of them. Let's turn tilt off. And now suddenly things are different. So it's pretty cool to go through ZBrush and start to figure that out. Okay, tilt. If we, um, one way we can describe it, let's get the sphere of influence, okay, and then you've got the alpha, let's say with eye points, okay, this is basically a gradient, so this is more white, this is more black, and it's going to take those, we're looking at it from a side view, and it's going to just start to twist them more into the bend them in a little bit, start to tilt the whole thing more along the axes of the brush. But instead of me explaining this, let's take advantage of this loss of voice of mine, and you start to explore what are the differences between all of these different scale brushes, and see <coughs> If you can create some of your own and start to really figure out what the limitations of these guys are. See, that's pretty awesome. And that's the elastic brush. So what is the elastic brush doing? It's keeping high-res details, right? So this line stays in, all that stuff stays in. It's pretty cool. Uh, if we switch over to the standard brush, we're going to have a different effect. So, what is your homework? In this particular case, your homework should be to create your own brush, okay, your own scale brush, create your own skin brush, create your own kind of organic surface brush. Make sure you understand what's the difference between trim dynamic trim adaptive, okay? And then next week, we're going to get more into the polygon systems like fibers, and uh, we get into hard surface next week. 
So between now and next week, the homework again is start to create your own brushes, save them, create your own collection, and then next week we get into hard surface. We're going to get in, you're going to really need to know how to use your brushes there. And, um, and in between then and now, I'm going to send you guys more videos as soon as my voice recovers. Uh, detailing a bunch more of this information. Uh, we're specifically going to get into the alphas more, strokes more, and I really want to make sure you understand tablet pressure and also insert mesh and curve mesh, curve brushes. All of these awesome guys here. Any other questions? Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. We are not having class on the 4th of July weekend. I mean, unless you guys really want it, but my money is you guys would prefer to have, you won't be here that weekend, <laughs> uh, if you're in America, that is. So, um, the 4th of July weekend, no class. That means it's the 4th, 5th, the 6th, and then we'll pick it up. Any other questions? Michael, no questions? Give me a shout out, guys. Yes, no. Thanks, Martin. All right, guys. And uh, keep me posted on how your experimentation with R6 is going. Love to see what you guys do. And you, we're, we're blessed because it came just in time for hard surface. There's so many new things to that. All right, guys. Try to get the recording up as soon as possible. Thanks for the well wishes. Yeah, and i got to stay out of the Metallica concerts for sure. It means I don't know about a neti pod. I've seen it. I, I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> They, they use it in India a lot, but they do a lot of things in India that I'm not prepared for, so. <laughs> all, right, all right, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for bearing my voice and, um, and for coming out on a beautiful Saturday. I'll get better. No worries. I feel good. It just sound like crap. Take care. Talk to you later.